Slide is not the right one, right? Nobody is. Can I even have a bag? Just please pass a bag. <laughs> Can you pass it behind you? Great, nothing in the brain. Less than I say. I still have a few seconds. Are some of you already using parallel replication? Yes, some. Okay. Who's using MySQL 5.6? 5.5? Slaves. The master has the binary log, the journal of all the transactions. The slave downloads the binary log, store that in the relay log. This is the job of the IO thread. Uh, and we have the SQL thread that is applying the binary log in the local database. And a slave can produce itself binary log to be itself a master. Uh, replication is asynchronous, so we might have lag. It was single threaded, now it can be multi threaded. And it was single master. Now it can be uh, multi master. Well, I mean multi source here in MySQL 5.7 and MariaDB 10. So, parallel replication, it's relatively new because it's hard. And why is it hard? Because if you run transaction in parallel, you have to be very careful to have data consistency. So, you have to make sure that the transaction you run in parallel on the slave gives the same result as what happened when they were, were run on the master. 
And if those two transactions touch the same data, well, you might end up not having the same results. So data consistency is the challenge with parallel replication. And why is it important? Uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we had server with a single CPU, a single, single core, like some of you might remember that. So single threaded replication was fine there. But today, it's pretty easy to have a server with 12 cores, 24 cores. And it's quite a waste to use a single one of those cores to replicate. Also, the, 20, uh, the 85 percent of the server that we're replicating and booking, the 10 percent other that are not replicating is because we are pushing too much data to those server. Replication is not keeping up. So hopefully with parallel replication, we will be able to have other solutions for those 15 percent server and go back to replication. Now the strategy is we write at many places and we have consistency issue. We have to make sure that we write everywhere. But this is a pain. So hopefully parallel replication will alleviate that problem. Uh, the other thing why it's important is some, some resources in, in computer can give more throughput if you send them many queries. Just think about a RAID 1. There's two disks in the RAID 1. If you send a single read re request, only one of those disks is working. You can serve two read requests at the same time with RAID 1. So, uh, so parallel replication is important. History. Uh, I, I will go through all those solutions one by one, so uh, this is the quick inventory. So MySQL 5.6 introduced parallel replication based on schema. So the concept here is if you have transactions that are schema local, so that only touch a single schema, two transactions in different schema do not conflict and you can be running parallel on the slate. So it's a pretty simple idea. It works pretty well. And MySQL 5.6 implements that. So the master tags the transaction with the schema they are touching in the binary log. This goes to the slave. And the slave can dispatch work to many worker thread if they are in different schemas. So if you want to use that, you have nothing to do on the master except having many schemas that you only write to one schema at a time. And on the slave, you set global parallel replication worker to something greater than zero, and you will have many worker threads. So it's, it's as simple as that for MySQL 5.6. Uh, MySQL 5.7 has the same behavior by default, uh, and MySQL 5.8 might have a different behavior. Uh, so if you want to use that type of parallel replication, you have to tell MySQL 5.7 to, to use a database type. So it looks good, but there's an implication that is really important to understand is if you run transaction in parallel on the slave based on schema, they might commit in an order that is different from what they appear in the binary logs from the master. So if you have transaction A1, A2, B1, B2, A3, B3 in the binary logs of the master, in this order, A1, A2, A3, so this will be run in parallel with that, and think of that as two different workers. And one possible commit order on the slave can be A, B, A, B, A, B. That makes sense. But if B1 is really long to execute, you will have A1, A2, A3, B1, and then the other B2, B3. So, uh, so that is something new, and we have to be aware of that. Uh, and there's many other possible uh, different order, uh, commit order. And this is something new, and it has many impacts. First, the impacts of binary logs on slave. Two different slave might have different commit order from each other. It, maybe one has a warm cache, one is faster than the other. So transactions do not commit on the same order on the two slave. And so the bin logs of those two slave are not, the transaction are not in the same order, and they're different in the master. So Rene talked a little about like doing black magic around bin logs, well, it becomes increasingly difficult to do black magic around bin logs in that situa situation. Show slave status will report something, but what will it report? So the position reported by show slave status 
is a position where everything before is committed and after some things might be committed and some things might be still running, some things might still be queued. So this position here where everything is committed before is called the checkpoint. So uh, show slave status will report a lower watermark where everything is committed before. So we have impact on crash recovery because crash recovery was taking advantage of this SQL thread position. But the SQL thread position now is more complex. So crash recovery is not as simple as before. It has impact on GTIDs. We can have temporary holes because of the gaps in the, in the transaction execution. And many more, like if we want to skip a transaction, which transaction will we skip because we are running transaction in parallel? Backups and heartbeat. Like if you're using heartbeat to know what is the delay of your slave, you have, if you have the heartbeat in one schema, the other schema you don't know, so you need to have heartbeat in every schema that you're replicating. Uh, so there's some, uh, some things that we can use in MySQL 5.6 to remove gaps. If you're not using GTID with MySQL 5.6, uh, it might not be crash safe uh, if you're using parallel replication. So it's a very long discussion. Read my blog post from last week about it. Uh, for skipping transaction, first remove gaps uh, and use, uh, go back to single threaded replication if you want to make sure that you know which transaction you're skipping. And for backups, read the documentation of your backup tool. If you want to know where those gaps are stored, we can go into uh, that table. The there's no documentation. There's only the design of parallel replication. It's quite a hard read. Uh, and there are three tuning parameters for uh, parallel replication. Uh, and we'll discuss quickly those. Uh, it's all about checkpointing. Uh, so I've discussed what is a checkpoint, and checkpoint is tried every slave checkpoint period. So this is a parameter. Every, by default, 300 milliseconds, the SQL thread, the coordinator thread, will try to advance the position of, of show slave status. But if the next transaction is still running, because it's long, it may be a long outer cable, it will not be able to advance this checkpoint. So checkpointing might well, fail, that doesn't mean the slave fail. It means that we're not able to advance at this, the position. And you can have some pathetic situation where maybe the checkpoint now is at A1. A2 is really on to the queue. All the transactions here in another schema are running. But at some point, like the coordinator thread will stop reading ahead and will block because we have a long running transaction here. Uh, and so at this point, we will stop uh, executing things in parallel. So the solution is to increase slave checkpoint point group, which is the length of the unexecuted transaction, uh, the read ahead where we can have gaps. And if we have big transactions, uh, so imagine a transaction that is uh, 100 megs in the bin log, like this can happen, uh, that will fill the queue of the dispatcher, so you can control that with slave pending job sites, increasing that. So that's it for MySQL 5.6. Now we'll go to MariaDB 10.0. And there's two types of parallel replication in MariaDB 10.0. Yes? Uh, so you no, you, you, you're protected against that, but the reason is too long to explain now. It's basically, it's in the bin log. The document is in the bin log. Uh, but uh, uh, we can talk about that at the community general after the talk. Uh, MariaDB 10.0 out of order. It's basically the same idea as 5.6, but instead of using schema-based, MariaDB is using a hint that must be given by the person that is writing to the database. <laughs> the way to set the, to give this in is to set a session variable which will contain the right domain, which is which must be independent. So MySQL 5.6, the schemas are independent. Uh, MariaDB 10, we have to design the application with independent domain. Um, and the number of threads must be set on the slate. Uh, 
It's also available in MariaDB 10.1, but you can burn your fingers with that because if you mess up using your right domain, uh, if you think the two transactions are not conflicting, but they are, and you advertise them in different right domain, they will run in parallel on the slave, and your data might be inconsistent. So it's, it's more flexible, but it can bite yourself back. MySQL 5.6 has a way to protect you against that. If you do a transaction in two different schemas, uh, it will not run them in parallel. It will block the parallel replication pipeline in the slave and your data is safe. And we have the same problem. Like it's explicitly out of order, parallel replication. So we have all the same problem as out of order commit on slave. Gaps, bin log content, show slave status, uh, and all those things. All those things that we discussed with MySQL 5.6 can happen in MariaDB 10.0. A little difference uh, in MySQL 5.6, show slave status is the position where everything is committed. In MariaDB, it's the position of the last committed transaction. So in MySQL 5.6, the gaps are on one side. In, My, uh, in MariaDB 10.0, the gaps are on the other side, which can lead to very surprising things if you stop your SQL thread, you'll see it rewind in the relay log because it must execute its gap. So it's quite surprising. Uh, there's a bug open on that. The patch is pushed, so it should be in the next uh, release of MariaDB. If you want the full detail of that, you can read the, those two references. Uh, there's a way to remove gaps. There's a way to skip transaction. Uh, and uh, the, dispatch, the dispatching algorithm to workers, uh, we'll come back to that after I explain uh, the incoming order. But there's also things, special things about long running transaction and big transaction that you must uh, be careful with. I have a time for one question here if, before we continue. Somebody has a question? So far, so good? Okay. The interesting part, in order parallel replication in MariaDB 10.0. So the concept here is transactions that are committing together on the master can be executed in parallel on the slave. So if they commit together on the master, they do not conflict. So if they do not conflict, they can be run in parallel. So here we don't need any special design in our database. Uh, from the developer or different schemas for this to work. Like this works just by itself. So the master, when it will group commit a transaction, it will tag in the bin log the, a group commit ID, and the slave will read that group commit ID uh, and to, to be able to execute things in parallel on the slave. So, well, of course, you need the MariaDB 10.0 master, and you set many worker threads on the slave. So now the bin logs look like this. We have a commit ID at the end here. And so we have one group commit here. We have one group commit here of five transactions. So with GTID number 185 to 89. So there's five transactions transaction here that has the same group commit ID. They can be run in parallel. We have an orphan transaction here that committed alone on the master. And we have another group here of seven transactions that can be run in parallel on the slave. So what about the grouping? There's some good grouping and there's some bad grouping. So with same bin log equal one, so instead of syncing after every transaction in the master, grouping will happen while the sync is in progress. So while some transactions are being written to the bin log, other transaction like queue. And so this is how MariaDB builds its group commit. If we don't sync, or if we don't sync often, bad grouping can happen because sync doesn't happen, so we don't have time to group in transaction. Or if syncs are really fast, if your disk is battery, if there's a cache on your disk and the sync is quick, bad grouping will happen. What do you mean? 
Incorrect grouping or slow grouping? Small grouping. We will have small groups. So if we have small groups of transactions to run in parallel, we will have very few parallelism opportunity in this step. Thanks, John. So there's a way to monitor that using two statuses, bin log commit and bin log group commit. So the number of commits and the number of group commits and the size of our groups can be uh, computed by a simple division of, the, of those two numbers. And we can also optimize grouping. I call this slowing down the master to speed up the slave. So basically when a transaction is ready to commit, it doesn't commit right now, it waits a little, a certain time up for other transactions to join the group. And to, to make sure we don't wait too long, if, if, there's, if there's a decent group size already, once we reach bin log commit wait count, we trigger commit without waiting anymore. So using that, we can optimize our group size and make sure that slave will have transaction to run in parallel. Uh, so this is about grouping. Now let's see some things that doesn't work well and we have to be mindful about. If we have a very long transaction on the master, so three transactions, commit together on the master, but one of those transactions is running since a long time. When we run those in parallel on the slave, transaction two and three are finished really soon. But we have the other one that is a monster transaction that is running for a very long time. So those monster transactions are blocking the replication pipeline. So here, let's, let's suppose this transaction is taking 10, uh, is 100 milliseconds and those transactions are taking one millisecond. Running that serially would take, like a uh, single threaded would take 102 milliseconds. And now in parallel it's taking 100 milliseconds because we have that monster transaction that is taking all the time. So a message for developer, before MariaDB, I think 5.3 and before MySQL 5.6, commit was expensive, so it was good to do big transactions. Now it's not anymore. It's not needed to do big transactions anymore because MySQL 5.6 and MariaDB 5.5 and MariaDB 10 do a good job at grouping transactions. And those big transactions become bad in parallel replication, so avoid those. But if you avoid those transactions of one second, 10 milliseconds is still long compared to one millisecond. So uh, 10 milliseconds is the time with for, for a disk seek. So if you have a transaction that needs to read from this, it will take 10 milliseconds. If you have a transaction that is in RAM, it will take one millisecond. So like, we're kind of stuck with that. Uh, so we'll see the result uh, of some tests. So that was one problem with uh, parallel execution in MariaDB 10.0. Another problem is intermediate master. So if we use intermediate master, and it's quite common, Shlomi talked about it, Rene talked about it, uh, it's quite common in our architecture. Let's see four transactions on intermediate master. So on X, four transactions commit together. Yay, we have a group size of four. Those transactions will be executed in parallel on Y. So on Y, those transactions are started together. But the first two one commits first, and then the second, the two other commits later, because they're not of the same size. So what happened? On Z, they're not run in parallel all the four of them. So an intermediate master here will slow down the re parallel replication pipeline and will bring a uh, problem to second level slave. I'm talking about uh, how to optimize that just now. But maybe your question is not about that. I know, my question was why, why don't intermediate master record the original group? Well, this is called a bin log server. <laughs> a bin log server is exactly passing the information of, uh, of parallelism from the master downstream. So we could think about optimization here, but use bin log server instead. It simplifies it a bit. Uh, and, and this is not theory, uh, this is not only theory, like I observed that. On the master, if I have group size of 15 and then like 12 in average, on a master, on a slave, so an intermediate master that is writing bin log, the group size is going to five. So we really are losing potential 
parallel execution on that slave. And that slave was running with 20 threads, so, uh, so it's not because the slave was running with not enough threads. Uh, and, and I've observed that uh, during my tests. Uh, I'll skip that because I have a lot of things to say. Uh, just two things about tuning. Uh, big transaction will be a problem again. Uh, and uh, if you use out of order parallel replication, make sure that you allocate enough threads to uh, each uh, domain. Slave group commit. This is something really interesting. So we talked about group committing on a master, so putting many transactions at the same time in the bin log. But what about on the slave? Like usually a single threaded slave is running one transaction, begin commit, and then another transaction begin commit. And those commit here, they are if you're writing to the bin logs, you're you're writing every time and you pay the cost of writing to the bin log twice. If those transactions are in different uh, group commit on the master, they cannot be run in parallel. But if they do not conflict, instead of committing T1 right away, we could hold the commit, try to run T2, and then group those transactions together. And so here, we went from two writes to the bin log to a single write in the bin log. And not only we did that, we also identified parallelism on a slave. So a slave that ran transaction one after the other was able to identify that those transactions were not conflicting. And I will use that to test parallel replication later. So MariaDB 10.0 does that if you set a number of threads greater than zero. If you set bin log weight, uh, commit weight count greater than zero and weight QSEC greater than zero. And also, MariaDB is careful to avoid pathetic uh, waiting if you have conflict, except for UDL. A question about that, because it's quite an important concept, so I can answer one question. No questions? Okay. MariaDB 10.1. So MariaDB 10.1 has many types of parallel replication, no parallel replication, only slave group commit, conservative, which was the previous way of doing parallel replication, and two new modes, optimistic and aggressive. Aggressive is actually just a more aggressive optimistic mode. So there's something I didn't told you about MySQL 10.0, uh, is even if transaction commit together on the slave, they could conflict. Uh, they commit together on the master, they could conflict with the slave. So if T1 and T2 commit together, we could have T2 here because the INODB structure is different. We don't have exactly the same pages, the same index. T2 could block T1. Uh, and if T2 blocks T1, T1 is not able to complete. T1 is waiting for T2. But T2 is waiting for T1 to commit before committing itself, because we have in-order commit. So here we have a deadlock. Uh, and to solve this deadlock, MariaDB will kill transaction two. And you can monitor that with the states. That really doesn't happen often. Uh, it really needs uh, a situation where things are really uh, like aligned for this to fail. Here I'm running two and a half thousand transactions per second, and in four minutes, I've had three of those events. So three times for 600,000 transactions. This means five times in a million. Okay, this is really something that doesn't happen often. But if it's mishandled, the slave blocks. So you really don't want that, and it's a very good thing that MariaDB kills the second transaction. But here we have a way to run optimistically transaction. So optimistic parallel replication lets run everything. Let's not care about conflict, run everything. And if there's a conflict, because we commit transaction in order, we will have a deadlock that will be killed. 
and we will make progress. So this is the natural evolution from my uh, MariaDB 10.0, uh, and this is called optimistic power replication. So no need for group commitment and master anymore, only for conflict detection on the slate. So to be able to take advantage of that, you need to set either uh, to optimistic or aggressive the parallel, the slave parallel mode, and of course many threads on the slate. Uh, so if you want to know the difference between us optimistic and aggressive, uh, read the manual. I don't have time to explain. But there's one thing, there's some things that we cannot roll back. So DDLs we cannot roll back. Transaction in my ISAM we cannot roll back. So those things will block the, the, the replication pipeline because if something co conflicts later with those, well, we cannot roll back those transactions. So uh, this is the problem with optimistic power replication. MySQL 5.7, basically very similar to MariaDB 10.0 based on something similar to group commit. It's not exactly group commit ID, it's intervals. We also have a notion of slowing down the master to speed up the slave, and we can have the same problem with, as with MariaDB 10.0. So long or big transaction will block parallel replication, and intermediate master will slow down parallel replication. A zoom in the bin logs. So we have two values in the bin log. Uh, it's quite a complex algorithm uh, to explain how this is run uh, in parallel on the slave. In some situations, it could be better than MariaDB. In some situations, it could be worse. Uh, like it's, it's a discussion to have around here. Uh, something to know, though. MySQL 5.7, by default, do not commit, does not commit transaction in order. So we have gaps. Uh, and all the things that come with gaps. And we don't have replication crash safety if we're not using GTIDs. There's a parameter to run things in order. It's disabled by default. But uh, to be able to take advantage of that, you need to enable bin logs and log slave update on the slave, which, by the way, in my test are about 10% slower. So I want my slave to go faster if I want to enable parallel replication, but if I want to preserve commit order, I have to pay a penalty of 10%. Uh, so that does, just doesn't make any sense. Please click affect me like uh, Valerie told me, like it told us like we, we need this to get fixed. And it's still not crash safe. So I don't understand because there's no gaps. Things are committed in order, but it's not crash safe. So in that situation, show slave status can be trusted. So same thing, uh, it's not crash safe without GTID. If you're interested to run that without GTID, click affect me. I have seven minutes left to talk about how well it performed. So I did tests for MariaDB 10.0, 10.1, 5.6, 10.0 again. So those are tests. We're not running that at Booking, but this is done in Booking.com environment. Those are real environment. I haven't test 5.7. Uh, 5.7 doesn't have slave group commits, so it's quite hard to do tests with a real life benchmark without having a master in class. So the way I do my test, uh, so for my IDB 10.0 and 10.1, uh, I have three environments, so three different master at booking.com that are production master. They're running MySQL 5.6 as a master. Here, I put a MariaDB 10.0 slave, a first one and a second one. This one here is slave group committing, so it's identifying parallelism. I need a MariaDB 10.0 master for that, so I'm stuck with B. And then with my last slave, I'm able to run things in parallel. Uh, a small comment, uh, details are in the blog post I'll publish. Uh, so group commit, I will skip. The slave group commit has very interesting uh, properties. Uh, it can go from not a lot of transactions per second, uh, 50, to much more. Uh, but I don't have a lot of time to discuss that if I want to present 
all the other results. <coughs> so in RDB 10.0, my four environments, what I do is I'm catching up 24 hours of transactions. So E1 here, in blue, the number of commits per second on that scale, so about 100, 150. And the size of my group on that scale here, so something that varies between 15, sometimes I have five, but like in average, about 10. So this is my first environment. The second environment here, a little less than 100 transactions per second, group size 10. And the two other transactions, uh, the two other environments, uh, all the details in the blog post. So the results. So this is speed up with five, ten, twenty, and forty threads. Uh, SB is a slave with binary log, but without log slave update. HD is iterability, so single log equal one, and your exponent equal one. So well, speed ups of a little less than two for 40 threads. And with no durability, so single log equals zero and pair exponent equal two, if you're already running with low durability, you can expect speed up of 1.2. Uh, this is kind of, this graph is, uh, is misleading because HD single threaded is three hours and ND is one hour. So this is actually much faster, but you do not have good speed ups with low durability. So if I present the result a different way, here is the speed up uh, from HD to ND. This is a speed up of high durability, and if you're already running with low durability, you can expect that. If you're running with high durability and you want to get there, you need to enable both parallel replication and remove durability of the slave. So, E1, speed up of a less than two. A speed up of one is the same time to execute. So speed up of two is I divide my time by two for execution. So E1 and E2, speed up of two, 2.4. Okay, like this is good. I was expecting a little better, like group size of 10. Uh, so I was expecting four, five, but my, my expectations were, I think, high. Uh, so I'm a little disappointed here, but hey, it's, it's good. Uh, slave running twice as fast. Uh, E3 and E4, hmm, like only 30% faster, and here only 50% faster. Well, only, it's still faster, but it's, I, I cannot take advantage of a lot of course. So a little disappointed about, about that, uh, but it's still useful. I skip that. Uh, MerDB 10.1, let's go right now for the aggressive parallel replication result. So here, this is conservative, MerDB 10.0, MerDB 10.1, much better. Uh, so this is with high durability, so I go to speed up uh, 2.7. Here, again, with no durability, uh, the speed up are again much better, I had speed up of 1.2, so 20% faster. Now I'm getting uh, more than uh, uh, one time faster to speed up of two. E2, so again, much better. E3 and E4, let's remember, E3 and E4 were bad result with MariaDB 10.0 here, and now they're much better. And this is E4. Do you have a comment on those graphs? How many threads am I using? This is insane. I'm using a thousand threads. Uh, so with a thousand threads, I'm still getting speed up. But I only have 12 cores on those servers. So this is very surprising. The reason is that I'm scheduling IOs in parallel. And because I'm scheduling IOs in parallel, I'm actually doing replication boosting and I'm prefetching things. Uh, because those are not CPU bound, but those those have IO bound controls. Those graphs you've seen. My SQL 5.6, good. Uh, speed up up to 3.5. This is on a database of a little more than one terabyte, 20 schemas, so quite good results. 
uh, and also Foucault's. This is real world, uh, my really fantasy world, uh, workload. So, in summary, it's complex to understand. Uh, MariaDB 10.0 in order, and probably MySQL 5.7, I'm extrapolating as limitation around long transaction and intermediate master. So we have to be aware of that. Uh, MySQL 5.6 and 5.7 without GTID, not crash safe. MariaDB out of order solution needs careful, and I should underline careful, developer involvement. So to me, it looks like MySQL 5.6 is a little simpler and safer to understand uh, than MariaDB out of order, which is more flexible but more complex, and you can burn your fingers with it. MariaDB can not one aggressive. That's a very good speed up. Uh, and all cases, like, please forget big transactions. Long transaction or big transaction in the log. Some links, more reading. And send me a mail if you have questions, or grab me at the community dinner. And I have one minute for a question, or two questions. Yes? Yes. No, uh, is, no it's optimistic. Uh, in the case of slave, group, and myth, we'll have the same result as conservative. Uh, <coughs> Uh, and because optimistic, the way it works is the master is giving some int to the slave, uh, like do not run those transactions in parallel because uh, they conflict. Uh, so this avoids deadlock on the slave and rollback on the slave. Uh, so optimistic, okay, this is why it's not aggressive, but uh, I'm, like, I'm not sure about is it better or not. My intuition tells me that it's better, like a rollback is not that extensive compared to an IO. An IO on this, on a spinning disk, is 10 milliseconds. A rollback is much less than 10 milliseconds. So a conflict is, like the cost of a conflict is much, is, is, is less than the gain of prefetching that data in the buffer. Uh, but this is an intuition and that doesn't apply to SSDs or it's different for this Do we have time for another question? Or, um, yes. I have time for another question. <laughs> this is a question for Fred. Can I ask yes. one pretty basic question? Yes. Uh, when you talked about this from a contextualistic, is this about real performance or is it about actual data durability? And actually, if you have the optimistic model, does it mean sometimes it's... No, optimistic is correct. Optimistic is consistent. Optimistic is just running transaction optimistically, hoping they do not conflict. And if they conflict, paying the rollback, uh, which will cost CPU. But my my intuition here tells me that 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 rollback on spinning this, like getting that data warm in the cache, is is very good. In my test, I get up to 25% of rollback. So I'm probably wasting CPUs, CPU, uh, because I'm rollbacking. But I'm I'm sending more IOs to the to the disk, and this is why I get speed ups. I'm done. Thank you.